Hi, my name is Neil Kierkegaard, and I'm going to discuss Chapter 3 from the textbook today. Chapter 3 is a chapter that is devoted to introducing students to concepts and techniques used in the business process model modeling system. It basically serves as a kind of proof system that one might see in geometry or other mathematics that businesses use to break down their business needs or goals in a flow chart type manner. This presentation will go into all the various components that make up a business process model notation, or BPMN for short, as well as how they are used in red. Business process modeling has three main attributes, mapping, abstraction, and purpose. Mapping refers to uh, the real world phenomenon being represented. Abstraction refers to simplifying or omitting irrelevant details. And lastly, purpose, which represents the reasoning which drives what is being abstracted. So to, for a real world example would be a wooden model of a commercial stadium being built. The commercial stadium being built is the mapping because that's the real world phenomenon being represented. The abstraction is the details that are omitted when using a wooden model such as the lack of landscaping or interior electronics. And lastly, the purpose which drives the reasoning, uh, the purpose which drives the reasoning is that the because it's a wooden model to show uh, potential people how the uh, stadium is supposed to look, it doesn't need to have internal plumbing or have a life size uh, uh, representation of anything. The three main concepts in BPMN are events, activities, and arcs. Events, which are represented by circles, rectangles are represented by rounded arrows, and arcs or sequence flows, or as they are otherwise known, are represented by arrows with a, arrows with a full arrowhead. In BPMN, exclusive decisions and inclusive decisions are two different types of ga decision gateways that are used to model decision points within a business, proce business process. Exclusive decisions represented by an exclusive gateway in BPMN, a diamond shape with a single outflowing off flow and multiple incoming flows, are used to model decision points where only one path can be taken based on specified conditions. When a process reaches an exclusive decision gateway, the conditions that are associated with it, with each inflow inflowing, are evaluated. Only the flow whose condition evaluates to be true will be followed, and all other flows will be disregarded. Exclusive decisions are useful when there is a need to choose a single path based on mutually exclusive conditions. They ensure that only one path is taken, leading to a deterministic outcome. So in a sense, using this type of notation ensures that there will be only one final outcome. An example will be if one is determining if a project is successful or not. It either is or it isn't. Inclusive decisions represented by an inclusive gateway in BPMN, a diamond shape with multiple incoming and outgoing flows, are used to model decision points where multiple paths can be taken simultaneously based on specified conditions. When a process reaches an inclusive decision gateway, the conditions associated with each incoming flow are evaluated. All flows with conditions that are evaluated to true will be followed concurrently, allowing multiple paths to be executed simultaneously. Inclusive decisions are useful when there is a need to consider multiple possibilities or allow for parallel execution of activities based on different conditions. They enable a more flexible and inclusive approach to decision making within the process. In summary, exclusive decisions in BPMN allow for selecting a single path based on mutual exclusive conditions, while inclusive decisions enable the selection of multiple paths simultaneously based on their respective conditions. The choice between exclusive and inclusive decisions depends on the nature of the decision point and the desired behavior of the process at that particular point. In addition to inclusive and exclusive decision making, business processes management notation also involve parallel execution, which refers to the ability to perform multiple tasks or activities simultaneously within a process. It allows for concurrent processing of activities, enabling more efficient and streamlined execution of business processes. In BPMN, Parallel execution is typically represented using parallel gateways, diamond-shaped symbols. When a process reaches a parallel gateway, it splits into multiple concurrent paths, and each path represents a separate activity or task. These activities can be executed simultaneously without being dependent on each other's comp completion. Parallel execution is useful in scenarios where certain tasks within a process can be performed independently or in parallel, leading to faster completion times. It helps maximize resource utilization and can improve overall process efficiency. However, it is important to note that parallel execution can also introduce complexity. 
especially when synchronization or coordination among parallel activities is required. By leveraging parallel execution in BPMN, organizations can optimize their business processes, enhance productivity, and achieve faster turnaround times for complex workflows. In BPMN, business objects represent the information or data that flows through a business process. Real-world examples of them could include business documents, emails, or letters. In BPMN, they provide a way to model and define the structure and characteristics of the data involved in the process. Business objects serve as the foundation for data modeling and help ensure consistency and clarity in process design. Business objects have a number of different characteristics. One of them includes definition. Business de objects are defined in the early stages of process modeling, where one identifies the key data elements that are relevant to the process. These data elements could include customer information, product details, order, de order data, or any other relevant data entries. Representation. In BPMN, business objects are typically de depicted as a rectangular shape with a solid outline. One can give them meaningful names that reflect the data they represent, such as customer, invoice, or order. Data flow. Business objects are associated with process activities through data associations. Data associations show how data is passed between activities and the business objects they use. Errors are used to indicate the direction of data flow connecting the activities with the associated business objects. Properties. Business objects can have properties that define their attributes or characteristics. These properties can include data types, constraints, validation rules, or any other relevant information. By defining properties, one establishes the structure and the behavior of business objects. And finally, reusability. Business objects can be reused across multiple processes. This promotes consistency and reduces redundancy in data modeling. When a business object is used in multiple processes, changes made to its structure or properties will be reflected in all the processes that reference it. By utilizing business objects in BPMN, one can effectively model and manage the data flowing through one's business processes. They help provide a clear understanding of the data requirements, facilitate data integration, and support process automation efforts. In BPMN, active resources and passive resources represent different types of participants or entities involved in the business process. Active resources, also known as human resources or performers, represent individuals or roles that actively perform tasks or activities within a business process. They typically correspond to human participants, such as employees, system users, or external users, who actively contribute to the execution of process securities. Active resources are capable of initiating actions, making decisions, and interacting with the process. They have control over the flow of the process and can directly influence its outcome. Active resources are often represented as swim lanes or lanes within a pool, indicating the role or responsibilities in the process. Passive resources, also known as system resources or objects, represent entities that provide services, information, or support to the business process, but do not actively participate in executing activities. They typically correspond to systems, databases, or external resources that are accessed or utilized by the process but do not have decision-making capabilities or control over the process flow. Passive resources are usually depicted as separate elements within a process diagram connected to activities through data associations or message flows. They can be used to model interactions with external systems, data storage, or any other resource that the process interacts with without actively driving the process flow. In summary, the main difference between active resources and passive resources in BPMN lies in their level of involvement and control within the process. Active resources actively participate, make decisions, and drive the process flow, while passive resources provide services, information, or support to the process without actively driving the flow. In BPMN, pools and lanes are graphical elements used to organize and represent participants or organizational units involved in the business process. They provide a visual structure for modeling complex processes involving multiple stakeholders. Pools represent separate organizational entities or participants in a process. They can be thought of as a high-level container that encapsulates an entire process or subprocess within a larger process. Each pool typically corresponds to a specific organization, department, or external entity that participates in the process. For example, a pool could represent a sales department or supplier company. Pools are depicted as rectangular containers with solid lines that surround the entire process or subprocess they contain. They are often labeled with the name of their corresponding entity. 
lanes. Lanes are used to categorize and differentiate activities within the pool. They represent roles, departments, or responsibilities within the organization that contribute to the process. Lanes are depicted as vertical or horizontal swim lanes within a pool, dividing it into sections. They can be thought of as a subdivisions of a pool. Each lane typically represents a specific role, department, or participant involved in the process. For example, within a sales department pool, one might have the lanes for sales team, marketing team, and customer service. Lanes help visually organize activities within the process and show how responsibilities are distributed among participants. They can be labeled with the name of the corresponding role or department. By using pools and lanes in BPM, one can visually represent the different participants and their roles within the process. Pools provide a high level view of the overall process, while lanes help break down the process into manageable sections and show the flow of activities within each participant's responsibility. This visual representation enhances clarity, facilitates process understanding, and supports the effective collaboration among stakeholders involved in the process modeling and improvement efforts. In BPMN, subprocesses are used to represent a set of activities or tasks within a business process that have a distinct purpose or can be modeled as a separate reusable unit. They provide a way to modularize and encapsulate complex logic or repetitive patterns within a process. Subprocesses are self-contained units of activities that can be treated as a separate process within a larger process. They are used to improve process clarity, manage complex complexity, promote reusability, and enhance maintainability. Subprocesses can be used to represent a series of related activities, a reusable sequence of tasks, or a subprocess that may be called multiple times from different points within the main process. There are two main types of subprocesses, embedded subprocesses and reusable subprocesses. Embedded subprocesses are an embedded subprocess which is directly embedded within the main process flow. It is represented by a rectangular shape with a thicker border and activities are modeled within the main process diagram. Reusable subprocesses. A reusable subprocess is defined separately and can be referenced and invoked from multiple points within the main process or even from other processes. It is depicted as a rectangular shape with a thinner border and its activities are defined in a separate subprocess diagram. There are many benefits to using subprocesses, one of them which includes process decomposition, which means subprocesses can be used to break down complex processes into smaller, more manageable units. This improves process understanding and makes it easier to analyze, maintain, and modify specific parts of the process. Reusability. This means that subprocesses can be defined once and reused in multiple processes or called multiple times within the same process. This promotes consistency, reduces redundancy, and simplifies process modeling efforts. Modularity. This means that subprocesses allow encapsulation of logic, enabling the reuse of predefined patterns or standardized sequence of activities. This improves process consistency, accelerates development, and supports process improvement efforts. Collaboration, because subprocesses can be assigned to specific roles or departments, facilitating collaboration and coordination among different stakeholders responsible for different parts of the process. Subprocesses should be used when there is a need to simplify complex process flows, improve modularity, promote reuse, or encapsulate the specific set of activities with a distinct purpose. They are particularly useful when dealing with the repetitive patterns, exception handling, or subprocesses that are shared across multiple processes. By utilizing subprocesses effectively, one can enhance the clarity, maintainability, and flexibility of one's BPMN process models. Sometimes subprocesses, as they are, embedded in the parent process model, aren't enough. Sometimes they need to be reused to other process models. That is where global subprocesses come into play. In BPMN, Global subprocesses are reusable subprocesses that can be found at the global level and referenced from multiple process models. They provide a way to standardize and centralize the modeling and implementation of common subprocesses across different processes within an organization. Global subprocesses are subprocesses that are defined separately and can be referenced from multiple BPMN process models. They are designed to promote reusability, consistency, and maintainability of complex subprocesses across different processes. Global subprocesses allow organizations to define and manage standardized subprocesses in a centralized manner, reducing duplication and ensuring process consistency. Global subprocesses have three main characteristics. One is reusability. Global subprocesses are created with the intention of being reused in multiple process models. 
They capture a specific set of lo activities or logic that is commonly used across different processes. They also have a, dis uh, have a separate and distinct definition. What this means is that global subprocesses can have their own separate BPM MN diagrams that define the activities and flows within the subprocess. These subprocess diagrams can be maintained independently of the main process models. And lastly, invocation. In process models where the global sub process is needed, it can be referenced and reinvoked as a reusable unit, similar to calling a function or method in programming. There are many benefits of using global subprocessors, one of which is standardization, where global subprocessors enable organizations to establish standardized, well defined subprocesses that adhere to best practices, compliance requirements, or industry standards. It's also useful in consistency. By referencing global subprocesses, processes across the organizations can follow consistent patterns and behaviors leading to better harmonization and process alignment. Global subprocesses also eliminate the need to recreate similar subprocesses in different process models, promoting reuse and uh, reducing redundant modeling efforts. This saves time and effort in process development and maintenance. Lastly, global subprocesses provide a centralized way to manage and update common subprocesses. Changes made to the global subprocess automatically propagate to all the processes references, ensuring consistent updates across the organization. Global subprocesses should be used when organizations want to establish standardized and reusable subprocesses that are shared across multiple process models. They are particularly beneficial for capturing common patterns, managing compliance-related activities, or promoting process consistency and efficiency. By leveraging global subprocesses effectively, organizations can streamline their process modeling efforts, improve maintainability, and enhance overall process governance. This covers all the business process management notation concepts introduced in Chapter 3. This should help explain how to read and interpret business management process charts by breaking down all the various components involved. Thank you. Have a nice day.